Of course, if you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause this video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. We have a proton that is placed in a uniform electric field. And in part A, they want us to figure out the acceleration of the proton. We must understand that when a charge is placed in a uniform electric field, then an electric force arises whose magnitude is equal to the charge magnitude multiplied by the electric field. We also know that from Newton's second law that the sum of all the forces on an object equals its mass times its acceleration. We can assume safely that the only force acting on this proton is the electrostatic force. So we can draw that very simplistically as follows. So that means that the net force would simply be that electrostatic force. So we can actually say Fe is equal to Ma. Now we just noted that Fe is equal to Q times the electric field. So we'll make a substitution for Fe in that way. And in part A, we want to find the acceleration. So if we're going to find acceleration, we'll divide both sides of this equation by the mass. And therefore, we can see the acceleration equals Q times electric field divided by the mass of the proton. All we need to do is fill in the known values. Remember that the electric field strength was 640 newtons per coulomb. So we're going to fill that in for E. And for Q, we have the charge of a proton. Now the charge of a proton is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. And again, we'll multiply this by 640 newtons per coulomb for the electric field strength. The mass of the proton is approximately 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So let's go ahead and type this into our calculators. And when you do that, you get approximately 6.13 times 10 to the power of 10, and the unit will be meters per second squared since we calculated acceleration. So this will be the correct answer to part A. Going on to part B, how long does it take the proton to reach this speed? Well, this speed would be the 1.2 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. Recall that the proton started from rest, so that would indicate that the initial velocity of the proton would equal zero meters per second. We're accelerating it up to a speed again of 1.2 times 10 to the six. So you can say that the final speed is 1.2 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. We have the acceleration from part A. And now we're simply going to calculate the time. There's a nice equation from kinematics we recall that the final velocity equals the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Let's solve this for time. We can subtract the initial velocity from both sides. So then we have VF minus V initial equals AT. And then we'll divide both sides by the acceleration. And this gives us the expression that we seek for time. We'll just put the time on this side. Let's go ahead and plug in the known values that we outlined in red above. When you punch this in your calculator, you're going to get about 1.96 times 10 to the minus 5 seconds. If you want to convert that to microseconds, you can say that 1 microsecond is 10 to the negative 6 seconds. And so when you multiply the 1.96 times 10 to the negative 5, times 1 over 10 to the negative 6, you're going to get about 19.6 microseconds. So either this time in seconds or this time in microseconds would work. Those, or either one, is the correct answer to part B. We move on to part C, and part C wants us to determine how far has it moved in that interval. So that's a question of displacement, and we know that displacement would equal the initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. Recall that the initial velocity was zero, so we'll have zero meters per second multiplied by the time. Make sure that you use the seconds version of time, not the microseconds here. And then the acceleration was that value of 6.13 times 10 to the power of 10 and then we're going to multiply by the time squared, and don't forget to square the time. 
And again, use the 1.96 times 10 to the minus 5 seconds here, and then square it. So let's punch this in and see what we get. We should get approximately 11.8 meters for the displacement. So that's how far this proton has traveled. Finally, part D wanted the kinetic energy at the later time. The initial kinetic energy, of course, is zero because it wasn't moving, but the final kinetic energy will equal one-half times the mass of the proton times its final speed squared. Again, the mass of the proton is about 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. The final speed was determined earlier as... Oh boy, I think I lost it. Well, no, it wasn't determined. It was given to us, right? It was 1.2 times 10 to the 6th. So 1.2 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. And again, don't forget to square it. Let's punch this in. And when you do that, you get the final kinetic energy is approximately 1.20 times 10 to the power of negative 15. And the standard unit of energy would be joules. So this is the correct answer to part D.